morning, everybody. Welcome to the session. Hi, Azim. Welcome. This uh, session, instruction course 69, is Hospital Infection Control Practices Protocols Simplified. This is actually an invited uh, instruction course, which we had been doing it for past seven years. And uh, due to its popularity, it's being invited again and again. Now I find the popularity is decreasing with less number of people sitting. <laughs> Thank you, madam. So these are the panel we are supposed to be here, but unfortunately, Dr. Chandrasekhar couldn't make it because of ill health. Hope he gets well. And uh, Dr. Rajiv is me. Dr. Nirmal will join us shortly. You all know Dr. Nirmal is the brain behind ECO. It is uh, eye care organization in ABH standards drafted by him with the help of AOS and it is the only specialty of ophthalmology we have a separate standard for NABH. No other specialty has got. So we should thank him for uh, all the effort he's taken. He's the brain behind that. Dr. Gagan has not uh, joined us. He'll be joining us shortly. And Dr. Ram is here. He's a microbiologist from Aravindaya Hospital, Coimbatore. And, uh, the young Dr. Kumaran is here. He's into this field. He's an uh, excellent speaker. The next session is, is going to be chaired by him. Then we'll move on to our uh, topic today. I've taken a small clipping. From the internet. Is it playing? See, just to give you an idea how Infection spreads because of poor hand hygiene. Look at that surgeon, he's holding an infected wound, he's touching his pager, he's hurriedly. Welcome, Nirmal. Uh, so he's going, handling a telephone, he's spreading the infection to the telephone and leaving it there. The next person coming in, taking the same telephone, the infection is spreading again from there, and she is moving on, opening a door, spreading the infection to the door handle, and this ultimately reaches the patient. So this is, this is a small clipping what I took from the internet, which made me very impressed. So hand hygiene is the single most important factor in reducing infection. WHO has given guidelines. If you follow strictly, before you touch the patient, you do hand hygiene. Before you do a clean procedure like IV line, after handling the body fluids, after touching the patient, and after touching the surrounding of the patient. So definitely as an ophthalmologist, we don't want to see a patient like this in the post-op period. So, Disinfection, hospital infection control starts from OP. So what we did in our hospital is we used vinophthalin dye. It's a clear solution, odorless, which turns pink on alkaline medium. Once, what we did was we spread this uh, phenophthalene dye on the reception table. That's the first contact the patient has with the hospital direct hand touch. Then we, what we did was we followed up these patients throughout the consultation process and found out where are the places the patient commonly contaminates. So when he is being examined, we test the patient. We contaminate a hand. We apply ointment. We apply drops. And when we apply drops, we accidentally touch the lashes. The vial gets contaminated. And finally, we shake hand. All this ha spreads. And finally, we rub our own eyes. So hand hygiene plays a very major role in controlling the infection. So when we apply the alkaline solution to these areas, we find 
with phenolphthalein water I spread onto the table there I spread all over the hospital especially the areas of great contact and these areas need uh, yeah, intervention and cleaning periodically so that the infection don't spread further from here it can go to the OTO also see the handle of the door it's turned pink and it could it was traced to the optical shop also so it is necessary that we do the disinfection process between patients between highly contaminated patients and periodically we should change clean and take care that these infection don't spread this little lamb it's very very important it's a place where we transmit the infection from one patient to the other so it should be ideally wiped after every patient if not at least contaminated patient conjunctivitis patient so these are the steps we have to follow regularly in cleaning this little lamps so that a patient who comes with the foreign body should not go back with the conjunctivitis so even the chin dress rest should be removed the door handle should be cleaned periodically if a conjunctivitis patient comes all these step, steps should be followed then the other things what we do is the tonometer should be cleaned after every contact with the patient the scan probe should be cleaned simple mild disinfectant solution is enough to disinfect and the three mirror is one thing which we need to disinfect periodically the contact line solution is one solution which is ideal for cleaning these instruments and a simple hand wash is not enough all the steps described by the European norm should be followed whenever we do hand hygiene between the patients other things we neglect is the stethoscope BP apparatus and the trial sets we need to clean we hardly clean this at least once a day at least you should clean then there is a tendency for us to use these gloves for uh, simple procedures but suppose we have bacteria in our hand which is the which is uh, demonstrated with uh, gre uh, green color there when we take the clean gloves it's not the sterile gloves we use for uh, example drawing blood or giving a test toes anything when we apply these gloves we feel that we are very safe actually you are not at all safe see what is happening now those bacteria or the infective agent which was present in the hand has come outside can I oh. am I audible no the very purpose of wearing a glove is lost so most of the dentists they use these gloves for removing it's highly unhygienic and uh, do not encourage such a glove which is only for scavenging you carrying a waste or something you can uh, use these gloves not for any of the surgical procedures or uh, so whenever you are wearing a glove do hand hygiene and then do it will be much better do the hand hygiene doing the hand hygiene.
This is to demonstrate with uh, watercolor the need for all these steps. If you use watercolor like this and casually wash like what we wash otherwise without following the step, it will look as if you have covered everything. But closer look shows that the inter web space is not covered, the dominant thumb is not covered, the web space are not at all covered, tip of the finger is not covered. Now let's see what's going to happen if you follow all the steps described in the European norm. You have interdigital, knuckle, thumb, now look at that, not a bit of a space is left out. So this should be strictly followed for all surgical scrub and it should be made mandatory for surgical scrub. Now let's see it practically being done. It's the palm to palm, interdigital, then the dorsal surface, thumb, knuckle, wrist, tip of the finger. The entire process should be followed for at least three to three and a half minutes for the beta adenine to act. And rinse, and while rinsing also, Try to follow the same step so that you don't leave out any of the soap material in your hand when you're rinsing. And then, if at all you're using the nail brush during the scrub, it should be used only for the nail. That's it. This is the nail brush. And if at all you're using it, as the name suggests, it should be used only for the nail. Using it on the arm, you're going to bring out more bacteria outside. And, it's, and after you have your scrub, wiping clean is important. This is a wrong way of doing it. This is yet another surgeon. He's being very careful wiping only his palm. This is again not sufficient. A uh, little better way of doing is using the two surfaces for the two hand separately. But to be precise, the four quadrant technique should be should be followed, one quadrant being used for one hand, the second quadrant for the second hand, the third quadrant for the one arm, and the fourth quadrant for the other arm. This is what is called the four quadrant technique for wiping clean before you apply your alcohol based disinfectant, before you wear your gloves. There again, you see, look at that. He is following all the steps described in the European norm. Then, once you wear your gown, the routine way of wearing your gloves is being demonstrated. This is, you touch only the inner part of the glove. The outer part, you don't touch with your bare hand. Now, when you come to the second glove, you are touching the outer surface with the gloved hand and you cover the hand. Now, these gloves have powders in them. So, those powders should be washed before we go in for the surgery because it can ca cause stars and such gloves are not being uh, advocated for ophthalmic use now. What is being advocated now is the powder-free gloves which is being demonstrated here. The same technique is being followed to wear the glove. This is the powder free glove which is being advocated for ophthalmic practice. This is the way you have to stand after gloving. Now, this is the third way where the 
assistant helps you in wearing your glove assisted way of wearing glove this can be done for the uh, surgeons because once the staff uh, has already know now the last method is the totally non touch method where the gown is covering your hand and you glide your glove onto it and then pull your gown outwards this is totally non touch method now after this if you are very careless if your tubing is outside your sterile field and hole like this the whole purpose is lost so you got to be very very careful in this then introducing sterile instruments into the sterile field just to demonstrate that i've uh, put some powder on top of the pack and then trying to open it in the sterile field you find that you find that powder is dropping onto the sterile field so whenever you are uh, introducing it should be outside the sterile field and open so that whatever deposits is on to the on the cover doesn't fall onto the surgical field this is the proper way of introducing sterile packs instruments in this sterile field and then look at that when you have two tables the back touching the second table and finally this is the proper way of removing your gown the gown has to be removed first followed by the glove we normally remove a glove first and then the gown this is the proper way of removing the gown now ot cleaning and disinfection as you all know we carry about 372 trillion bacteria in us and every person entering is going to drop bacteria into the theater so the number of people entering the theater should be minimized and the in my advice the best indicator to say how your theater is just turn put your footwear upside down and see your back back of the footwear that will give you an idea of how your theater is and your habits in the theater the theater etiquette oh, the mobile is very dangerous don't carry your mobile inside your ot the way you stand you contaminate wearing street clothes should be strictly prohibited look at that in a camp the person is going his cap is removed it's put on to another patient and that is removed again and put on to them these things is going to contaminate the theater very badly the theater and peeping into the theater wearing your glove um, mask properly is very important holding the handle with your gloved hand ideally it should be opened by another person or the same person can use the he use his back to open the door eatables in the theater should be avoided and going to the toilet with your theater dress these are the things we commonly do but it should be strictly banned and if at all it is necessary change have a separate footwear for that go to the bathroom or toilet and come back so let's go into the cleaning the first thing you clean the theater is their microscope whatever is has settled on to the microscope is going to drop on to the surgical side so that is the most important thing you have to do and lens cleaning should be done with a different solution lens cleaning solution not with the alcohol bleach this i am demonstrating with the mustard seed on to the on the microscope when you zoom it you can see the mustard falling down the same thing is going to happen to the invisible deposits there so th these are the some of the cleaning agents we use in the theater so common mistake we do is we pour a little like that and dilute it and use so always measure the quantity of the uh, disinfectant you are going to use so that you get the proper dilution cleaning in the, these are the improper way of cleaning the surfaces look at that the wrong way of doing it is wiping and is walking behind it there is no point doing like that so always do it unidirectionally one direction so that you bring all the dirt to one place and 
remove it. So wiping the wall, unidirection. Again, the trolley, the flow should be done unidirectionally. This is the proper way of leaf. And leave the theater closed for this specific time. This is using a mop. It's easy for you so that it doesn't hurt your back bending. And you can reach even to the top of the wall. Unidirectional way of wiping. It will all look very simple, but when once you see it in a video, you will know how easily it can be done. This is the figure of eight method. But make sure the leading edge is the same throughout. That's very, very important when you're following the figure of eight method. This is what is described as figure of eight method. So you cover a set of area by this method where you can read. The same method can be followed for wall also, figure of eight method. And always the uh, mop should be removable so that you can wash, dry, and even autoclave if you want before you repeatedly using it. Trace can be wiped clean, the same unidirectional method. Cover the ed edges also. This is the figure of weight of cleaning the surfaces. And cleaning the table, OT table, unidirectional way. Don't wipe up and down, unidirectional. If it is too long, make it into two segments, wipe it clean in unidirectional method. That's the c finishing it with the edge of the table. Always clean the filter of the AC regularly. Wash it clean, dry it, and put it back. And this, what I'm demonstrating here is the three bucket technique, which can be followed by everybody. It's a very simple method. In the first bucket, you have the proper dilution of the disinfectant. Wipe. Go to the third bucket, which is clean water. Rinse it properly. Come to the second bucket, which has got a mild dilution of the disinfectant or clean water. Go to the third one. Then relatively clean mop you have again, continue with it. This is what is demonstrated as three bucket technique. See, look at that. The second bucket is relatively clean so that the disinfectant doesn't contaminate. Now we have the modern one, which has got the mop. The first one has got the blue one as the disinfectant. The center part is for filtering the excess uh, disinfectant. Mop clean, unidirectional way. Come back, rinse. Go to the third one, which contains this uh, clean water. Come back, rinse it again. Go back to the disinfectant. And squeeze out the excess uh, disinfectant before you continue the process. Now, all fogging, use of broom, sprayers, fumigators, or all out of, should not be used in. See, this is, uh, this is uh, in a theater, I could uh, get that scene. Then taking culture, now the culture is uh, becoming less and less important compared to the open plate technique. But anyway, I'm just demonstrating the places where we normally take for uh, culture. You moisten the swab, table length you take. So. Every swab has to be moistened before you take the swab. The Pico machine, where, where you handle most. 
and also the filter in the AC. Now what I'm demonstrating is the open plate technique. The common mistake we do is we keep the cap open upside down. So it should be ideally facing down so that that doesn't collect the bacteria. So open and left for half an hour with the AC on. Leave the theater closed, close it, seal it, label it and send it for culture. This autoclave is one which we normally neglect. This also needs to be cleaned and see it. Even there he is following the unilateral direction. This is the modular theater where you ha your touch is almost nil everywhere. This is the HIPAA filter. The, all, uh, the surface are coved. And even the scrub area is all sensors. Now we'll move on to the cleaning and packing of instruments. Here we follow the three tray technique. The first uh, tray has got the disinfectant. Very mild disinfectant is enough. This other two has got uh, distilled water only. And it is better to clean it inside the solution so that aerosol is not produced while cleaning the instruments. After cleaning, in the, it's rinsed in the second uh, tray. And finally, all the hollow instruments are flushed clean. What I was saying about the aerosol is this. When you do it outside the aerosol, you can see the aerosol flying out. It's all contaminated. It's better to have clean it within the solution and never pack them wet. Any packed wet instrument, autoclave will not work. It should be dry before you pack them. This is being packed without drying. All the patency of the uh, needles and cannula, Simco, and uh, FACO handpiece should be flushed. This should be done immediately after the surgery so that it doesn't dry up and cause uh, sticky biofilms inside. Both the aspiration as well as the irrigation port should be cleaned separately, adequately make sure it is. Then ultrasonic cleaner is very helpful in ophthalmic practice. And uh, the enzyme is controversial. It's better that we don't use the enzyme cleaner. Ultrasonic cleaning is enough. And we have indicators for ultrasound cleaner, which turns uh, blue. The red color turns blue. And the place where you're cleaning is also quite important. You should have a specific place, not outside a toilet like this. And the instruments should be thoroughly dried before you pack for autoclaving or as well as ETO. If, if it is urgently needed, you can use air dryer, dry, check for the uh, sharpness of your instruments, split simco, cannula. You can see, uh, examine them under the microscope and pack them carefully so that the sharp instruments are not damaged while packing. Trays like this are ideal for packing. Use pouches for autoclave as well as uh, then packing methods is being demonstrated here. This is the parcel way of packing where whenever you fold, you give a flap outside. So see that that's that's the principle of packing. This is called the parcel way of packing. This is for the staff to start the theater. So when you open, you're not going to touch the inner surface of the pack at all. So you always have a flap to hold to bring it out. This is called the parcel method of packing. This is the enveloped method of packing wherein you introduce an autoclaved or a sterilized instrument to a sur surgical field. So here again, you leave a flap for you to hold when you're going to open it. always have a leading edge to hold. 
So whatever instruments you want to introduce into the surgical field, once the case has started, please pack them in an envelope method. Whereas the staff who is going to open, see how he is opening it, so that you're not touching the inner, inner surface at all. And you get the instrument, you can hand over the instrument, sterile way to do it. Always have indicator in your packing and check for it once you open the pack before you start the surgery. Now this, I went to a gynec hospital. I found that uh, the person was pack, uh, folding the gown in this way. Now the, the difficulty in disposing of the disposable uh, gowns, we are going back to the older gown. Look at the way the anesthetist is about to give a spinal and he's, he doesn't know which is the head and tail of that uh, gown. And he's opening, he's not able to, oh, he's not able to figure out which way to do. So there is a proper way of folding gown, which I'll be demonstrating now. So this is what we normally use. So fold it into half and you get the flap on the back. That again you fold it into half, the way she's demonstrating there. Do the same thing on the other side also. Right? Hope it's very clear here. Then put the arm in front. Fold the entire thing into half. Hope you get a clear idea how it is being done. Now fold it into three. Right? So far. Now lift the center part of it so that a W shaped fold is created. Right? What she's doing is she's extending the fold what she did at the back. Just now this you can put a tie if you want or leave it like this. Once you remove it from the bin, you can see you introduce your hand into the pouch like thing which appears there and just open it. It opens up like that. You're not going to touch any part of the gown. Now bins are not being uh, recommended for uh, autoclave. If at all you are using, don't pack it like this. Stuff with it. Steam has to penetrate. So it's best that you pack it in a way that uh, the steam penetrates adequately between the layers of the pouch. So always have unidirectional, layer by layer, and don't pack it tight. Now we have materials to pack like this, which is reusable. You've got buttons like thing, you fold it, pack it. So you can have separate pack for each case. So chances of contamination is very less. So you have a separate thing. Let's pack. Now the previous session also, they were talking about autoclave machines and all. The ideal for ophthalmic use is the horizontal autoclave which has got a separate chamber for steam, which is generated, and uh, the, uh, the autoclave chamber is pre-vacuumed. And the best thing is to have individual pack for individual surgery, like this. So you have the bigger machines, which is more automated, which, is, which will uh, take care of all the cycles. We need not uh, bother, and it will give you a feedback. On it. And uh, vertical autoclave is no more advocated for ophthalmic practice because it doesn't have a vacuum cycle and it's dangerous. What is being demonstrated here is the Bovidic test. You put a sheet in between uh, the sheets and this has to be periodically done to check whether your autoclave is working properly, whether the vacuum cycle is working properly and please retain those sheets in a file to prove that your autoclave was working and there's nothing wrong in your sterilization if something goes wrong. 
these are the lead-free bovidic test sheets which are available now, can be used. These are the different uh, models available in the market. Then uh, this is the class one uh, indicator. It just says that uh, the pack has gone inside the autoclave and come out. And this is the class five. And class six is what is recommended now. It gives all the parameters, temperature, steam, uh, as well as the time. So the ideal thing, what we use is the TST sticker, uh, TST indicator. And uh, what is being demonstrated is the elix tube, which uh, determines your vacuum cycle in your autoclave. So it is sealed on one side. It's about one and a half meters long. And it is included in the pack. This is the bio biological indicator, which is the ultimate one. Now we have rapid uh, indicators in uh, biological also which will read uh, the biological indicator within an hour. Flash autoclave should not be used regularly. It should be used only for uh, emergency because there is no drying cycle. You cannot store those. And any pack which is wet should not be used. It's unsterile. ETO is, is a good option, but it's very toxic gas. And uh, maybe another four or five years, it's going to be banned and worldwide. So what is going to take, uh, take over will be your plasma sterilizer. Here you can see the packs being loaded in uh, ETO sterilizer. And these are the indicators for uh, ETO sterilizer. different indicators. Any pack after ETO, which if it is open, is not sterile. It should not be used and discard. Re-sterilize. This is plasma sterilizer. The advantage is uh, the byproducts is water. So it's harmless. This uh, The only disadvantage is you materials like cloth cannot be used in this. And the machine itself is a bit expensive. And uh, doesn't involve heat. So heat labile instruments can be used in this, like tubings and other. This is the indicator. And formalin chamber should never be used in ophthalmic practice. One reason is there is no indicator to say that the particular instrument is sterile. Cydex is and always have your record properly. Maintain all the indicators or whatever thing you have done. Retain it so that, and have registers with date, the different procedures you have done. Counter check by your uh, medical person and the staff. These records will be of very, very great help in a time of uh, problem. This is the autoclave uh, register, which says when, what time it started. Now these aut automated ones have printouts. You can maintain the printing uh, the papers, what you get. Thank you so much. Now 